Giants are world champions. Welcome to the Giants Insider Podcast on NBCSportsBayArea.com. Introducing your host, San Francisco Giants Insider, Alex Pavlovich. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Giants Insider Podcast. Um, today's guest, somebody who I, I thought was going to have a, a big impact on the 2020 season, Logan Webb, um, showed really good signs last year and, and was having a good spring, and, and I know they were really excited to see him on the mound, and it's actually funny, the last interview I did before the end of spring training, what ended up becoming the end of spring training was with Logan, and we talked a lot about his innings limit and how he would handle that. Um, never ended up posting that because the baseball world changed, and, and now we don't know what's going to happen. But if they do play a season, I, I think one slight benefit for the Giants is they don't really have to worry about that anymore, and, and they should throw him out there as one of their five starters and, and let him go and, and let him try to kind of earn that spot and, and make it his spot going forward. So we talked to Logan a little bit about that, but also what he's been up to and, and uh, his beloved Raiders. Um, he is a huge Raiders fan and, and was very excited about the NFL draft coming up. So hope you guys enjoy that conversation. Um, two quick things before I get to the podcast. If you're looking for kind of unique content online, um, did a couple things this week. One, looking back at some of the worst trades in Giants history. We'll do the best at some point too, but the worst are sometimes more interesting and, and maybe bring back more memories for people. And, and then uh, also wrote a story about how the Giants decide which players get bobbleheads. It's just a random question I've always had, and this feels like the time to do it. Um, so if you have your own random questions you've always had about baseball or the Giants, send those over, and I'll do my best to get answers. And then also we have been airing, in addition to the, the re-airs of classic games, um, we've been airing simulated versions of this Giants season. Every Friday night we'll do that. There will be a one-hour simulated game with Kruk and Kipe providing the commentary. They've had a lot of fun with it. And I mentioned this because Friday's pitcher is actually Logan Webb. And so you can watch that. And uh, he had some fun with that too when he found out. So hope everybody enjoys the podcast. Stay safe, stay at home, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. All right, Giants fans, Kelly Johnson, Alex Pavlich with you. And we are joined by uh, starting Giants pitcher Logan Webb and, of course, Rockland, California native. Um, Logan, uh, it is so good to see your face and hear your voice. I know we wish we were all talking about baseball and, and over at Oracle Park right now and you guys are playing games. But I guess first off, how are you doing? How have you been spending this time? Uh, good to see you guys, too. I, I also wish we were uh, seeing each other in person, but um, I'm doing good just – you know, staying home and um, kind of following these guidelines. It's a, it's a weird time right now, but uh, trying to stay positive as much as I can. And um, uh, like I said, just staying home and uh, hanging out with a lot of family time. You're kind of small on my screen, but I see you grew a mustache, which I experimented with for a few days. <laughs> Did not let Kelly see me, um, but <laughs> you have a fiance. So my first question is, how did she react? She hates it. I mean, it's not, it's, it's not a very good look, but, you know, I thought I'd, I'd give it a try when, you know, not seeing everybody. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, is, yeah. Is this out of laziness or is this like you really wanted to see how you would look with a mustache? Honestly, I've never tried it. I, I, I'll get some stuff here, but I've never tried it before. So, you know, I, I just figured I'd try it out right now. This is the time to do it. Um, what are you doing? You guys were right in the middle of spring training. What are you doing in terms of training? I, I know – and talking to coaches and talking to Gabe that you guys are all on a plan and what kind of throwing plan are you on right now? Um, so we have like, we're able to talk to like Bailey and everybody and they kind of have a throwing program set up for like relievers, what they want to do and starters, what they want to do. So um, we actually have an app, which is really cool. So we can um, like download what we threw that day. If we threw off the mound, you know, if we did weight training that day or just conditioning or core or whatever, um, so just keeping up with that and, you know, talking to them on, on FaceTime or on, on just calls or whatever, just staying with that. And, um, there's actually a, a, a guy with the pirates who's from my high school. So we play catch right across the street at the park right there. So it's been nice to have him to be able to throw with and, um, you know, just staying up on that. Emotionally, I guess, how disappointing is this for you just knowing, Listen, you were you figured to be part of the rotation. Obviously, we everyone was talking about innings limits and whether you know they would manage that this season. Obviously, it's going to be a shortened season, whatever it is, if it happens. Um, so innings limits not necessarily an issue, but you know, knowing that you were going to have a chance to experience your first opening day and your first home opener at Oracle Park in in you know an orange and black Giants uniform. 
Um, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I, mean, I hope I was um, uh, there during it for opening day and stuff, but um, it's tough. You know, I don't think any of us really want to be at home right now. We'd rather be playing wherever that may be. And, um, but I do think, you know, the safety is the most important thing and, and staying home because this, this thing is scary. And uh, obviously it sucks, but um, trying to stay positive and being with family helps a lot. And, uh, you know, having my fiance too. So just trying to stay positive through this whole thing is the main thing. And also, like I said, you know, keeping up with the throwing and um, kind of, I was supposed to throw five innings that the day it actually got postponed and, um, you know, building up and then kind of stopping. Um, it was tough, you know, uh, but um, once it kind of picked up again, you could start throwing more and more, kind of came back. One, one thing I enjoyed watching from you last year, and I know you pride yourself on just kind of being a bulldog out there and, and, and really competing. Um, what are you able to do during these throwing sessions or what do you try to do to maybe mimic a little bit of, of what you would be doing on a baseball field or, or maybe get the juices flowing a little bit? I mean, are, are you guys simulating innings or, or is it just kind of keeping your arm in shape? Red Bull and coffee. That's the, <laughs> okay. you know, <laughs> that uh, works. just getting the adrenaline going a little bit and, you know, taking it, um, trying to like how I would throw during the season, like the days in between the starts and throwing my bullpens the way I would throw that. And then the days I do kind of amp up, um, it's not as many pitches and stuff, but trying to really mimic and do everything that I was doing during the games or like I said, bullpens and throwing sessions, just trying to keep the same intensity. It's, it, it was tough at the beginning, but once you kind of get back into the rhythm of things again, um, it kind of comes back to you. Have you had time to like kind of, you know, process everything that happened last season? Um, obviously it, it started really with the suspension, but when you came back, you were like on the fast track to the big leagues you had one start at AAA, which Sacramento in front of your home fans, and next thing you know, you're in the bigs and you're making your your MLB debut down in Arizona. You get a win. You're like the first Giants uh, pitcher to get his first major league win in like uh, his debut in ten years or something like that. Have you had time to process everything that happened and the fact that you know you got to play for the San Francisco Giants? I try to. I mean, it, for me, last year was just really kind of a, a blur. You know, a lot of highs, a lot of lows, but. Um, looking back at it now, um, I would say I was, so one of the guys asked me the other day, what was like the debut? Like, I remember maybe a quarter of that day. Um, so trying to, yeah, like he said, like think about all the stuff and, um, it was really cool to, you know, throw in my, in front of my family and friends and especially being able to pitch for the Giants being from, from here. So, um, looking back at it, it's just, it's amazing. I, I I'm excited I was excited for the season, obviously, if we pick back up again, but um, just kind of picking back up with the end of last year and um, kind of building off the, those those things. I think actually the last interview I did before baseball stopped was with you, and we were talking about not just the innings limit, which maybe now is out the window, but um, some of the changes you were making in, in spring training and, and some things you were really excited about to change your pitch mix. And I, I know Gabe talked to us a lot and said, you know, wait until you guys see Logan and, and see what he's done. How much are you able to continue that right now? And, and can you kind of take Giants fans through some of what you were trying to do with, with Andrew Bailey and Ethan Katz and, and Brian Bannister? Um, like I said, like being able to talk to them and like kind of <laughs> feel things and, you know, talk to Schwartzy, um, kind of because when I'm able to throw a bullpen, I, I have a place where I can go and they have a, a like a rap soto and things and, um, kind of using those numbers that I was doing in my bullpens and spring training and the off season in Arizona, um, being able to look at that and see like what, what shapes I want it to be or um, like the pitch design of everything. And, and I was, I was, I was excited to, to get going and I felt like it was finally starting to click towards the end. And uh, just, like I said, just keep going with, with everything and try to mimic what, what I would do in a game and, um, I'm still working on those things. You know, it's, it wasn't a finished product, I don't think, but um, I'm excited still. Obviously, there were still obviously a lot up in the air. Tyler Beatty, um, his injury um, did kind of make things a, maybe a little bit more, I don't know, clearer for that fifth spot that, you know, you were had a chance to claim. Do you feel like you did enough 
um, to show the the coaches and, and Gabe Kapler that you know you're ready to claim that fifth spot in the rotation. I mean, personally, you always think that you you can um, you know claim that spot or um, be in the rotation. But I thought we we were in a good spot with there was a lot of guys that could go into that spot and, and do really well. Um, you know, Cahill, Tyson Ross, uh, D-Rod, uh, Suarez. You know, I, I just thought we had a lot of, you know, good arms that um, could fight for that spot. So I, I think going into that last, well, I think it was last week and a half, um, you know, there was a lot of excitement. I think everyone likes it. I know for me personally, I like to compete. So um, I thought it would have brought the best out of everybody and, um, and, like I said, I was I was just excited to to get going. You know, wherever that might have I, I might have started, um, I think everyone was kind of kind of excited to get going because I you know, we got a lot of good arms, a lot of good hitters, and um, we were excited to get going. You talk about competing with. Is there one batter last year, or one opponent that you look back on and, and just go like, that was kind of cool that I got to face that guy, or or just a memorable kind of showdown with somebody, or, or strikeout, or whether it was one you won or lost, one that you look back on in the off season and went, man, I'm, I'm pretty young, and I just did that in the big leagues. I think the the big one for me was the when I faced Adam Jones that first game. Um, you know, growing up watching him, he was awesome. He still is awesome, and I think that was the big one. There was a couple times where I faced you know Bellinger, or, uh, like JD Martinez. That was you have to just kind of take a breath and kind of be like, this is cool, you know. Uh, <laughs> And, you know, afterwards, you, it helps you realize, you know, that, you know, you do belong there and, um, you know, that you can face these guys. And I think that that takes time, but um, it was, it was cool facing those guys for sure. I, I would say Adam Jones was the, the main one where it was like, like, holy cow, that's, that's Adam, Adam Jones. Jones. Yeah. 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 That's cool. Obviously uh, you, you grew up going to both A's and Giants games. I know you, you were a big A's fan and, you're a big Stephen Vogt fan, which, I mean, how cool is that to make your Major League debut and have Stephen Vogt behind the dish catching you? Do you I know it was a blur that day, but yeah. I guess kind of talk to me about that. It was cool. I, I got to know Stephen in, in spring training, and then when I got called up, he was he was one of the first ones I, I talked to. And before I could even say anything, he was like, hey, I watched your video from Sacramento. Like, we're going to do this, this, this. And I was like, okay. Like, it, was, it, was, it was really cool for me. And uh, – he helped me through a lot of things last year and, and kind of, you know, slowing the game down. I, I know I've talked to you guys about that before and, um, and kind of how I want to use my, my arsenal or um, use my pitches. And, and <clears throat> Steven, you know, the, the A's legend for sure. Um, uh, it was really cool. What kind of conversations? I mean, I, I, he was our favorite after games. He, he's just such a, a good quote for us, and, and Ola's so willing. When he comes out to the pitcher's mound, and maybe it's a tense moment, um, what kind of interaction is that with him, and, and how does he approach you? Um, he kind of, you know, he's com he's a super competitive guy, and um, I think it's more like, like, come on, let's, you can do this, let's go. We got this bear down, that sort of thing. And Longo was good at that too. He would always. Um, I don't know if you watched some of the – you guys obviously watched the yeah. games, but he would come in from third base and, and he'd be like, all right, come on, let's, you got to get this guy right now. And um, having those two guys, the veteran guys, talk to you and come up and say – kind of, you know, it's kind of just like a pat on the butt and saying, come on, let's, you can do this, let's go. And uh, – but Steven was definitely a more intense, like, all right, come on, bear down, that sort of thing. And that was, that was good for me and cool for me. I know we all believe in Vogt. We believe in Vogt. He was yeah. so much fun. We're all sad that he's gone. Um, when you look back, I, get, I guess, give me some – I was surprised that Stephen Vogt was your favorite just because you're a pitcher, and I guess I assumed you would pick a, pick, a pitcher um, as a favorite player. But give me some of your other favorite A's and maybe some of your favorite Giants, even though you were a little bit more a, a green and gold guy. When I was younger, it was – I mean, I think it's everybody's favorite. was was Barry Bonds. And, uh, you know, trying to emulate his swing was everything's – favorite everybody's favorite thing to do but uh pitching wise um I would say when the A's had you know Mark Mulder uh Barry Zito Tim Hudson those were my those guys I like to watch and um kind of follow for sure yeah, you have what, behind you it looks like you have a sports bar of, of Raiders memorabilia and, and I know that is 
<laughs> your true passion. The draft is coming up in a week. How excited are you for that? And uh, how much are you paying attention? And, and what do you want? What do you want the Raiders to do in a week? I think I'm just more excited to have something like live. That was that's like my, you know, I'm always pretty excited to watch the the watch the draft and you know see what the Raiders do. Sometimes it breaks your heart. Sometimes you know um, it's happy. I I don't know. I'm not I'm not an expert on anything. I you know, but um, I definitely do think they're going to go for a wide receiver. I don't know who or when or, um, but wide receiver and then, and then a lot of defense. They, they need some defense for sure. Yeah. This draft is stacked with talent at wide receiver. Um, they do have two first round picks because of that Khalil Mack trade a mm -hmm. couple of seasons ago that killed everybody. I'm sure you were alongside the other fans and hating to see him go. I know I certainly did. So they have the 12th and the 19th overall pick. Uh, and I know you recently tweeted out some support for Derek Carr because there's been all this talk about them even going after a quarterback in the draft. I guess what are your thoughts on all that? I mean, I, I tweeted that out. I think people kind of might have taken that the wrong way. I was I was more saying it like, you know, I think he's going to come back to his, his like when he was the MVP type player his in 2016. And he's still amazing. You know, um, like watching him the last couple of years, it's, it's really cool. And you can tell he's a really good guy too. Um, mm -hmm. So rooting for him is, I've always rooted for him. I got his jersey. I got a Cleo Mack jersey too. Um, but I don't know. I I think it's, you know, um, part of being an athlete. And, and even when I, when that came out, all the Raiders fans started jumping on me saying, <laughs> you know, getting all pissed off. And, but, uh, and I believe in him and, uh, you know, as a fan, he's fun to watch, I think. Yeah, and you were a great quarterback in high school, so you got to stick with your QBs, right? I wouldn't say great. I was, I was a, I was a decent quarterback, but yeah, yeah, I, I definitely watching quarterbacks is like my favorite thing to do. Yeah, you know, I, I grew up here, and I have a lot of friends who are Raiders fans who are right now trying to decide what they're going to do this fall, assuming there is football, and how they're going to handle that, and whether they want to fly to Las Vegas at times, whether they want to pick a new team. Have you decided yet what you're going to do? It looks from Judging the background behind you, I mean, you're sticking with them, I think. I'm going to stick with them, especially if I'm in Arizona. That's a quick three, four-hour drive. So um, definitely uh, go to some games, and um, I'll, I'll always be a Raiders fan for sure. So what was your highlight of last season? Um, what do you think? Do you have a moment where you're just like, I don't know, a, a, I've arrived moment or a highlight or I don't know? Um. I would say there were there were two really cool moments. One was uh, one was pitching in Fenway. Um, I thought that was really cool, and I actually it was I pitched I think the first game, but I forgot to sign the wall, and I was so mad about it, and <laughs> but I forgot to do that. But it was it was really cool, you know. They, there's these sayings that I say when you when you're on the mound or your debut, don't look up. And um, when I got when I I was pitching at Fenway I got on the mound first thing I did was looked up and and it said welcome to Fenway Park and that was kind of like that was really cool for me and then obviously um the ceremony for Bochi's last game was 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 pretty cool for me to see yeah that's the Yastrzemski game that you pitched where you hit a home yeah. run that yeah that was one of the cool moments. All that. that wasn't that was an awesome moment I you kind of just those are just baseball moments where um you kind of just got to take it in like that is it was amazing. Yeah. Right. And did you, did you find yourself taking in Bruce Bochy's last, you know, I mean, everything it was, it was a tour of last for him last year and obviously an emotional final day, but, but to be able to play for Bruce Bochy, um, that has to be pretty special being from this area as well. It was awesome. Um, it was, it was really cool for me when he, when he got up and talked and it was also really cool when all the players were walking out from center field, like all the old guys, you just tell, how much he meant to all the guys. And um, I felt like, I, you know, I played for him for three years and I was only there for a month. And um, he was, it was really cool. And being able to win that, that last road game too um, in Atlanta was, was a pretty special moment for me as well. I have one more baseball question for you. And it's kind of random, but I, I've been thinking a lot about just, you know, day to day, what we're missing about baseball. And I'm curious as a player, What's the one thing that, that you really miss right now that maybe is not an obvious thing? I mean, it's maybe not being on the mound or, or being with teammates, but just something about 
being in the big leagues that you, you really miss right now and wish you could get back to? Um, I, like my first thing, like you said, the obvious one, I miss, I miss being around the, the guys a lot. Um, but shoot, maybe the chef. I mean, I, I miss the food. <laughs> they got good food, but, uh, yeah, I would say my main thing is the team. I miss, I miss being around the guys every day. It's, I mean, they become like your family because you're with them for eight hours a day and, uh, you know, create, you create bonds and I, I miss those guys for sure. Yeah. Your chef takes good care of you. I know he, he does a good job. <laughs> hey, if there is one player past or present that you could, you could face um, and pitch against and like challenge yourself with, who would it be? Hmm. I would say, honestly, Barry Bonds is one that I'd like to, to face. Uh, I wouldn't like facing him after I faced him because <laughs> um, what he could do. But I would say him or um, like Ted Williams, he's the guy you hear about like saying, it, a lot of people say he's the best player um, of all time. And he, he, you know, watching his swing and everything, it was, it's crazy how they used to swing, but um, it's cool. That'd be that would be awesome to face him for sure. All right, Logan, we really appreciate you uh, taking time and stay safe, stay healthy, and we look forward to hopefully having a season at some point. Definitely, definitely. You guys as well. Happy, happy to be on here. Good luck with All the right. draft next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good luck. It is out of here in the center field, and this game is over. Got him. And that's the perfect game. Swing it about. The Giants are world champions. The Giants Insider Podcast on CSNBayArea.com.